Hey guys, my name is Marshall Kirby from Orchard Hill Farm Equipment in Belchertown, Massachusetts, up in the uh, New England area. Today I have a Coyote CK3510 SE cab model uh, tractor with a loader. Um, this is a hydrostatic. Um, I just want to give you guys an idea of how easy it is to take on and off a loader on any of the Coyote products. Um, anywhere from their CS series, which is their subcompact line, all the way up from their, you know, compact, mid-compact, high-compact, all the way up to their, you know, farming utility tractor, upwards of, uh, you know, 73 horsepower, all the way up to that 115 horsepower. They're all going to share a similar loader of operational taking it on and off. Now, of course, your lift capacities and hydraulics and pistons will change, but the operation of taking on and off is going to be identical throughout their whole lineup. So that's something pretty important and pretty amazing to know. So whether you have this model Coyote at home or you have a little 25 horsepower, don't be afraid to watch this video and do exactly as I'm about to show you to take off and on your loader. Um, so I guess we're gonna start by, uh, right now I have the, the bucket tilted down. Usually you wanna start in that position. Um, now next is what you're gonna wanna do is if you have a bucket level indicator, which if you come over here, I'm gonna show you. Um, you want, if you have a bucket level indicator, you wanna start your tractor back up and get this rod to be flush with the end of this. Now, if you don't have a bucket level indicator, a good way to know if your bucket is level on the ground is gonna be basically to drop your bucket to the ground and make this edge run flat with the ground. So, of course, right now we're way off from level. So, um, I'm starting this way just to show you how to get it level if you don't know. So right there is completely level for me um, with the way the rod is working right now. Um, now, if you don't know, because you don't have the rod, drop it to the ground, but after you get it leveled to the ground, lift up on it, so make it come up, but don't curl your bucket. Um, you need the bucket in the air first because you need to drop your kickstands. These are your kickstands. Um, usually you're gonna have different notches or different pinholes. Some uh, tractors will require a pin to come out and a pin to latch in down here. This one's a quite nice setup where you don't need any pins. It just kind of locks itself in. Um, we'll go to the other side. You're gonna notice that I already have this done because we, uh, just to make time go quicker for the video, put it in the second slot. Um, you're already set up. Make sure they're both in the same slot. If you have one in the low one and one in the high one, your loader is going to be coming off awkward and possibly crush your hood. So very important to have those perfectly identical. Make sure, you know, look at them. You know, taking an eye is always best for your tractor's end uh, because we don't want to hurt the tractor in the end. You know, it only takes two seconds to take a look. So um, check that out. Once that's comfortably in a good position, we have our buckets level and everything, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to take out the pins because that's the next step. So you're going to start up the tractor. So right now, you're going to notice these pins are very hard. I can barely move them, all right? You just tilt the bucket until you feel it really loose right there. Start off so you can hear. Um, so take your cutter pin out on the back and then just wiggle it through. Sometimes they'll come out very easy, sometimes it'll be harder. You can always clip it back to it, put it back inside your cab or your toolbox or whatever you got so you don't lose the pins because you want to go put your loader back on, you need the pins, right? So um, come over here. This one's sort of loose, so should be able to get this one out. Take your cotter pin out on the back side and just pull it, right? And you get it out, put your cotter pin back in it and set it back inside your cab or what have you. Now uh, our loader is disconnected, although your hydraulics are still connected. So um, your loader's sitting in a frame right now. So um, it's still on there, but as soon as we work the hydraulics, it will pop itself out of the frame. So that's what I'm gonna do next.
is disconnected here, uh, but it is still sitting near our cab and near our tractor. Um, one thing I'm gonna tell you right now is you wanna have this on flat, flat ground. To be honest, even as flat as it is right here, it's still not perfect. It came off kinda harsh. Um, you know, maybe on a flat gravel driveway is best or even pavement or flat in the garage, somewhere that it's very, very flat. Um, so next, uh, we can disconnect our hydraulics, but first, before we do that, you gotta relieve all the hydraulic pressure in those, uh, in those lines, in the valve and everything, so they can come off very easy. Once we do that, um, we're gonna come out here. They're all color coded, so you'll remember which one to put back into which. Because if you put one in the wrong one, your loader is gonna uh, uh, run weird and maybe possibly not even run with certain functions. So, very easy. You know, you see a quick coupler, very easy setup. Next, I'm gonna start to back away, and that's gonna pretty much show you how to take it off. up and get a full view of this to really show you that I mean this loader's off it's holding itself up it's quite sturdy um, it's you know with the it really can't fall over to be honest as long as you got everything latched right it's on flat ground it can't fall over now the bucket is on it right now if we put anything like a grapple on here uh, pallet forks a snow plow a lot of people will try and take off their loader without the bucket on or with a different implement Please, please, we strongly recommend to not do that. Although some implements it may work for, many it will not. I once had a customer take off his bucket and try and take off this loader just on this same exact tractor and the loader actually started to fall and cracked part of his hood. Um, so, you know, it just left a big dent. His tractor still ran fine, but in the end of the day, he was pretty pissed off at himself because he took off the bucket. So. It's really, really important to leave the standard bucket on this tractor, some sort of good bucket, to give it that you know wide displacement, as well as to have both your backs uh, set down. Um, your hydraulics, you can plug your plugs back into them so they don't get crap in them over time. But uh, I guess that's uh, that's it. I really just wanted to show you guys again. This is a CK3510 cab. Um, this loader is basically the same exact loader setup that's going to be on all of their CK10 series. Um, so anywhere from a CK2510, 2610, 35, or 4010. Um, you go up to the DK series, it's going to be almost identical taking on and off. Uh, NX, almost identical. RX and PX, the same. And then we go down to the subcompact line, just the tiniest machine they make is the, like the CS series. Um, instead of having two, two end uh, kickstands, it'll have one in the middle. That's the only difference. As far as taking it on and off, everything is identical. So, uh, again, my name's Marshall Kirby from Orchard Hill Farm Equipment. If we can help you out, answer any questions, feel free to email us at info at orchardhillsales.com. Give us a call here at 413-253-5456 or visit us on our website at www.orchardhillsales.net. Thank you.